Hey guys, welcome back to Tool Talk. I have, I think, a pretty neat video uh, for you guys today. I'm gonna put the nerd glasses on and uh, start talking to you a little bit about electronics. The electronics that are in our trucks, the Ram and the Jeep brands, both have this 400 watt power inverter uh, that's included in the cargo management group and a couple other different packages with the Jeep. Um, the thing is, I, you see a lot of videos asking, well, what can I plug into that thing or can I power it up? And I want to cover a little bit of the topic about how much you can plug into this, uh, what does work, and then we'll look at the inner workings and I'll show you. You can upgrade to this system if you'd like, uh, if you think it fits your needs. Uh, if not, then you can just buy your own power inverter and just run it from the battery. Um, but that's what we're going to hit on today. Part of the power inverter system runs from the front of the truck to where I showed you the switch through the harness <clears throat> and then to the back. And if you, I'm under the bed here. And if I look under here, right there's the power inverter plug that then attaches to this connector and then runs down the bed of the truck towards the front and then into this chassis harness. This harness, you're going to have to provide um, all the wiring, the connector, the plugs, and the power inverter to get this to work. Let me show you the power inverter. Here are the steering wheel just below it. I've got my knee bolster panel completely removed. So you just pull the uh, snaps out. Under here, there's uh, going to be the location for your amplifier and your power inverter. The power inverter Has air, it allows air to flow up under the under the footwell here, <clears throat> then comes up and then cools this section off. The wiring is tapped in right on this side. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but there's an, um, a harness that comes out of here and then travels up here to your cargo switch. So you have the switch, the harness, and the power inverter that all have to be purchased as well as the chassis wiring that comes from here all the way back. Um, it can be quite a thing to add on, so if this is something that you really want, I would recommend that you go ahead and add it uh, when you purchase the vehicle. All right, so your Ram and Jeep truck have the power inverter. Well, how does that power inverter work? How do you take a, a car's battery or a truck's battery and turn it into 115 volts AC to power your equipment in the back of your truck? Uh, I have a little diagram here that will explain all that. A DC battery provides you with 12 volts. The 12 volts is standard for a car battery. So your car battery uh, can provide up to 700 amps if you have the tow package. And that's 700 amps times 12. If we just take 12 times 7 and 700 amps, I do some quick math. 0, 0, 14, hold our place, 0, 0, 7, what we get, how many watts can our battery provide? How about 8,400 watts at a given time? That doesn't consider watt hours and how long the battery will last, that's a whole other calculation, I'm trying to keep it very simple. So, what I'm going to do is take this 8,400 watts that's available to us in the battery, and I'm gonna turn it and invert it. I'm gonna take DC and invert it into AC. Well, a DC voltage comes through your car battery at a straight line. It's the electrons moving from electron to electron to electron. And that is in a direct path. It then circles back through the ground, which is uh, this symbol, it's a ground symbol. So we have multiple locations where it, it hits the chassis of the truck. That DC voltage isn't doing us any good when we wanna run a household current or the, the current in the walls. And so AC has to be converted by this inverter to a different uh, a sine wave. So think of, uh, think of the ocean. The ocean is, uh, it creates waves. And in that wave, um, you can get power from it, right? You can feel the power of the ocean. You can feel it pushing you. Well, that's how electrons work. But what they're doing is they're ebbing and flowing, ebbing and flowing. So AC, when it moves through the wire, it moves like this. So how does that provide us electricity? Well, it's, it's pushing one electron along, but it's not moving along the entire line like DC power does. DC is like the flowing water out of a hose. It just comes on full flow, and until you turn the hose off, that DC then stops. In AC, it's more like the ocean. It moves and moves and moves, those electrons, 
and then it moves it down the line into your plug. And because you have two of them, both sides are alternating. That's why it's called alternating current. And so this inverter under your steering wheel converts that power into AC to give you that power. So it's a really simple um, concept to get you what you need to know on whether this thing's gonna work for you or not in the back of the truck. We have voltage, which we already talked about. We know it's written on the, on the plug and it's written in the front on the switch right here. It says 115 volts in the truck. We tested it with a multimeter and you're gonna see in our video test that we have 114.7 volts, pretty close to 115. I had the truck off, so the inverter was doing its job, just getting that voltage up. Most of the equipment we were running was under 5.5 amps. If we multiply 114.7 times five, Okay, so we got to calculate 114.7, multiply that by 0.5, since it's decimal, it's not going to be that many watts. 57.35. So, 57.35. What does this tell us? Well, the device that I'm using right now is only pulling 57 watts. That inverter on back here has a cover on it, and on the cover it says 400 watts. Well, what does that tell you? How does that tell you anything? The 400 watts is the maximum it'll, it'll go into before the wire will send a signal back to the inverter and it will cut the system out. It will, it'll save itself. And so there's a couple little uh, fail safes built into the system, but at 400 watts, it's going to shut itself down. You're not going to overpower it or you're not going to burn it up. It's designed to be fail safe. So I have a device. It's, it's only pulling 0.5 amps because I used the multimeter and I'll show you how that works here in the, the rest of the video. But I'm only pulling 57 watts so I'm good what I really think matters the most and this is for you this is for you uh, when you're looking at your devices what what you have on your device it may say 96 watts when well, I think one of the things on the video was 96 watts we have 96 watts if we divide 96 into hundred and fourteen point seven we get 0.83 amps that's not even one a whole number I'm not even getting a whole number out of that so that's telling me I have I'm only pulling 96 watts out of this 400 so when you're looking at your devices and you're ready to pack your camping gear up and you're using your truck what really matters is pay attention to the watts if it's under 400 you're good no math needed but say you have something that lists amperage that's where you're going to take that, that voltage, multiply it by the amperage on that device. That's going to give you the watts. That's how you guys can figure out what I actually absolutely need in the back of my truck when I'm using it. Um, I think Dodd, or I think, uh, excuse me, I think Ram, and I think that Jeep did a great job in providing us a decent little power supply back there. Uh, it could always be more. Um, I've showed you the, the uh, inside and out of how it's wired up. I wouldn't recommend messing with that too much because you are starting to deal with household voltage. You will get a shock if that, uh, if that voltage is present and you touch it. Um, again, there are fail safes built in. There's a safety switch uh, and a magnet built into the actual switch in the back of the truck that shuts off when that cover's closed. So don't damage your cover. Uh, but when that cover's closed and this is even turned on, it's still off. So you have, say it gets wet back there, uh, maybe you're hauling some dirt, you got something back there that's making a mess. This cover is protecting that outlet the whole time. So it's either off uh, or it's on when you open the cover. Um, maintain your 400 watts. You'll never go wrong with that. And then um, let's do something fun. I want to show you guys what we can actually do with this amount of power. All right, so in here we have uh, this extra little switch that's right here. The 115 volt AC cargo light in switch. This uh, will glow when we put the truck into accessory mode. So we got the keys in and we're on and we've activated the switch. All right. In the back of the truck, when you lift up, you'll see that the switch comes on. There's a magnet actually inside the cap. And when you pull it away from the switch, it then opens a reed switch, which is an, another way of connecting um, this, this connector um, and activating the, the actual uh, outlet. It looks like it's flickering in the video I just noticed, but I think it's the refresh rate of everything in Jeeps today 
our electronics. So you'll see a little bit of a flicker right here. Uh, to my, my naked eye and just looking at it right now, it's not flickering like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my plug into it to show you what we're dealing with. So, okay. All right, plugged in. All right, we've got a cord set up for our test. We are on voltage AC. When we plug it in, don't touch bare contacts if you're ever gonna do this. In fact, don't mess with this unless you know what you're doing, but I wanna do this for demonstration purposes. So I'm at 114.7, that's with the truck off. If I'm running with the truck on, the voltage will increase slightly because you're running off a little bit more voltage from the alternator rather than the car battery. One is different than the other. All right, in this test, what I've done is I've split this cable um, there's no bare wires, but it's just the plastic split of the uh, insulation. And I'm going to go over to amps. And if you clamp, amp clamp an alternating current through both wires, you're, you're canceling out both sides, so you get a zero reading. If you clamp just one wire, again, don't try this at home, it's just for demonstration purposes, I can get um, very large amp reading in fact, right here it tells me I have 600 amps of capability in this meter. So you can see at idle, it's pulling 0.1 amp. So there's really, there's AC flowing through here and at, we tested the voltage and the voltage was 114.7. All right, what we got up first is a lava lamp. Got the lava lamp plugged in, turn it on. Hey, we got power. So there's electricity flowing through this right now. I have 114 volts, roughly, and I'm pulling 0.1 bulbs warming up. As the bulb warms up, uh, it will change the amperage pulled uh, because a filament under load actually is uh, it, uh, it's gonna run, if it's running cooler, it's gonna uh, change the amount of amperage it pulls. So it's warming up a little bit. We got a lava lamp. I'm not going to sit here all day and run this, but I wanted to show you that we're pulling about 0.2 amps. You multiply 0.2 by 114, and it's going to give you a smaller amount uh, than what the actual voltage is. So you're getting watts out of that. So you multiply to get watts, you get 114 times 0.2. All right, for the next video, I've got a 1500 watt Keurig. You think 1500 watts is gonna work on a 400 watt outlet? Probably not, but I wanted to do this for demonstration purposes. Got my favorite Christmas mug, camper van, you know, in case we need to tow something with the truck. All right, 1500 watts, let's kick it on and see what the amps do. Power's on. It's jumping up to an amp, uh, it's jumping back down. So let me try that, it just clicked back off. I hear a relay. So let's do it one more time. Power's jumping up, I heard it kick on, that kicked off. All right, so what is happening here is we have a 400 watt limit. The truck's 400 watt power inverter cannot supply power to a 1500 watt device. It makes sense, right? Once this thing climbs to about three, three and a half uh, uh, amps, if you multiply 114 volts by 3 amps, you're getting up near 400 watts. It's not, it's not exact, it's 300 something. As you approach that 3, 3.5 three amps of power at the 114 volts that this is providing us, you then can see that the truck senses the surge, it knows that the wiring cannot handle that, and then it shuts it down. So I get a click, but it's not enough to power a coffee pot. All right, so what I got now is an electric mixer. It doesn't have the power rating on it anymore, the sticker peeled off, uh, but it's your standard KitchenAid uh, hand mixer. I feel like with a different multiple settings on here, I'm gonna get different ratings of, um, different ratings of wattages. So as the resistor unleashes more and more power to the motor, and uh, it's, there's a resistor in here that decreases that amount of power available, as it goes up, it's gonna draw more and more amperage. So bring it in a little closer, let's, let's test it out. Right now I'm sitting at 0 0.04 amps. And I wish I had as much power as that engine running behind me on the APU on an aircraft. All right, so 
Yeah, we're plugged in. We're gonna go to first first one. Oh, we got power flowing, guys. We got power flowing. Look at that. Boom. All right. So how many? What do you guys think we're pulling right now? Well, if we're at 114 volts, we're pulling just under a half an amp. So we're pulling about 50 watts. Got 50 watts in setting one, give or take some. You guys get the idea. Setting two. Not too much more. It's still pulling pretty low power. So I could be camping and I could be like whipping up some eggs. I could have a camp stove out here with my gas stove. I'm making some eggs. I'm making the. Uh, uh, maybe I'm making pancakes and whipping up batter. Guess what? I have the power to do that. All right, let's go higher. All right, now we're cooking. Not a whole lot of change in the amperage, so we're just pulling still well under a half an amp. So, you know, we're uh, you multiply 0.3 times 114. That gives you your watts. So that's as much as I got. So I can. I'm really glad. I, I, I like that. This is something I could take on my camping trip, and uh, I got my lava lamp and I've got my uh, mixer. Let's see what else we can do. All right, so we're on to our next device. How about a 24 inch TV with a DVD player built in? Now I already checked the back of it. It says 42 watts. We're well, well under the 400 watts. So just for the fun of it, I'm gonna show you guys, hey, I got a camping trip. I got my eggs beat up. I'm gonna make some pancakes. I'm watching some TV with the kids in the back of the truck. Because really, what are we gonna do with a pickup? I wanna go overlanding. I wanna go camping with this thing. So let's see what kind of power it pulls. All right, so our power is at 0.25 watts. Let's turn the unit on. Power is on. All right, we're cooking. What kind of power are we pulling now? 0.37 watts, or 0.37 amps, so I'm taking its decimal. So if you multiply your 114 volts to a decimal, it's gonna be less than 114 watts, obviously. So I've got a, about a third of the voltage. So let's say, um, let's say 120 divided by three, right? So 12 divided by three is 40 watts. If I'm near, I'm about 0.4, so I'm at 40 watts. I'm only using a third of the capacity of the voltage that I'm pulling right now. Now this isn't a third of the capacity of the truck because I can pull three amps total. So this thing, I can plug in three TVs times 3.5. So I can plug in nine of these TVs to get the power of that to shut off. I showed you already that it won't work with a coffee pot, it's just way too much power. But maybe a smaller coffee pot, maybe uh, you could you could do, but anything with a, a warm element is going to probably blow it. No hair dryers, no coffee pots, things like that. Light electronics, I'm not even pulling a half an amp. So I've got my TV on, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, not sure if I can change the channel. Got the volume here. We have a DVD in here. All right, Got a little something. Let's see if it's pulling more power. All right, nothing else is really doing anything here. So, did you guys get the idea? What else can we plug into this thing? Now, it's just getting ridiculous, but I'm finding things to plug in, and this is so much fun. All right, so I've already checked the wattage on this, and I know it's good. But I want to see how many amps it pulls with our plug here. The wife's shark. Eat me. Oh, did we, uh, did we did not get the power on this one? No bueno. We still powered up. Yep, we're still good. It says it uses 96 watts. Household clean. I don't think we're going to get it on this one. Lights are on. It's not running. Am I doing something wrong? There it is. All right, we're pulling less than half amp. So that checks. All right, so let's take a second here and let me show you what we're working with. All right. If you zoom in right here and you look, at the wattage. So when you are dealing with your truck and you're trying to find out what can I take and what can I not on my camping trip that will work on this, I've got 96 watts that I'm gonna use here. That's only a quarter of the power that this can provide. So that just should give you some idea. 
there are certain things that you can plug in, some things you can't. I did kind of find something that was a little closer to um, a couple of amps to kind of get it up there to see what we're, we're dealing with in the middle of this. Okay, so I could sit here and plug stuff into this thing all day, but I think you guys get the point. Got my daughter's neon sign. Things are getting real now. I've got a two amp, we've got a two amp um, device that is rated at uh, around 200 watts, and this is a pretty hefty uh, pencil sharpener, but I just want to show you something up closer to two amps. I wanted to be able to uh, kind of capture that with how many amps it's pulling on, on my clamp meter. So let's go ahead and try it. Not quite getting anywhere near that. Getting a really nice sharpened pencil though. So it didn't even pull a quarter of an amp. So we've got all kinds of stuff hooked into here. Um, we do that. Let's just start pulling stuff in. Oh, we got a pin amp help. All right, enough of that. All right, we got up to about an amp there. As you can see, there's a there's a multitude of devices that you can uh, that you can throw at this thing. Uh, the big thing to remember is when you're looking at your device, check the amp the, the wattage and the amps on it, and um, it's going to give you a realistic expectation of whether you can power it with this 400 watt inverter. I've been pretty impressed so far with it. Uh, I do think it's a great add-on to the to the um, Ram trucks and the Jeep trucks. Uh, it's a good little device for camping. You can blow up your air mattress. You can blow up all kinds of um, uh, blow up devices and things like that for your uh, camping use. And it just gives you something that you can use as a, another um, part of the utility of the truck. I've been pretty happy with it so far, um, and uh, I think. Uh, I think we've tried just about everything we have around us right now. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, click like and subscribe and tell me what you guys think of the content. And um, I'll keep making some cool videos. Until then, keep, uh, keep uh, subscribed to Tool Talk.